right, I'm just about to undo the driver's seat, uh, very similar to the passenger as well. You've just got four mushroom bolts, uh, or generally mushroom bolts, sometimes they might have been replaced with nuts over, t over the years, but generally you should have just the four, one in each corner, so there's two on that side, there's two on that side. Uh, I think they're generally just 16mm bolts as well, uh, so just in case of unscrewing those, and then the entire seat and the base will lift up and come away, and then I can get the driver's seat replaced with the electric RX-8 seat. Right, so that's all for bolts undone, so now the seat should just lift with the base straight up off the, uh, the actual bolts themselves and away and out the van. Right, so that's how easy it is just to get the actual seat out. Just four nuts and bolts to take off and the seat just lifts straight out and then it gives you a good opportunity to get in, give the rubber a good clean around as well. Uh, before replacing the seat and then it's just a straight replacement straight back on for the base just with the four mushroom bolts straight onto the nuts and away you go right so time to get the double seat out uh, underneath the double seat you generally have six mushroom bolts uh, one in each corner and uh, one along the middle as well uh, typically on this uh, five of them came out a double one of them was a real pain in the ass but uh, managed to get it out without rounding it out so now it'll just tilt forward and that's the base loose and uh, ready for the seat to come out. Right, so to get the seat off the base you have four Allen bolts on the seat runners on each corner. You can either use Allen keys or hex bolts. I'd recommend the hex bolts because they just don't seem to round down as easily as some of the Allen keys do. So as I say, you've got four of these on each side so that's just going to come straight out there on that one on the front as well so I'm going to get these undone and then that will free the seat from the base ready for the new seat to get attached to the base front ones are a bit awkward to get into with the hex bolts you might actually need to use the allen keys for those because as you can see there it's just not really getting in without potentially causing damage to the seat and I'm going to offer this seat for sale in case anybody wants to re-trim it so I don't want to damage the seat because it's in really good condition there's no rips or tears in it so I'm going to get the allen keys out for the front ones and get those undone So that's all four bolts out securing the seat to the base so now the seat is just okay to lift away from the base and that leaves you with a box standard seat and a free base ready for the new seat to go on to And that's what you want after you've uh, ground all of the uh, lugs off. You just want a nice flat runner. Uh, I've done the other one on that side yesterday before I ran out of grinding discs. I've still got that one to take off there. And a couple there as well. Uh, I've already done the passenger side. I'll show you that one in a minute as well. But yep, a uh, few more to go. If I had better cutting discs that would cut through a bit quicker. That's uh, a diamond tipped one but it's been... Uh, cutting for ages now so it's uh, losing its edge so if I had some better discs uh, it would fly through but I don't so I'll just crack on and this is what I've got Well, uh, that's that seat about done. Uh, all of the protruding uh, hangers and mounting fixings are all off. Uh, the only things left are uh, the little prongs there. Sometimes they will line up uh, with holes on the bases or you can drill holes for those to go into. If they won't line up or if it looks as though it's going to be too awkward, I'll just uh, 
grind those off as well uh, but the other seats all done as well uh, this one's a driver's one this one's electric so that's why it's all the motors and stuff as well the passenger one thankfully is just a uh, manual so a lot lighter a lot less messing about so now it's going to be a case of uh, either fabricating some plates for them to mount onto the base or see if they will go on the base as they are i think they're going to need some plates but uh, we'll see so i'll pick it up when i'm ready to mount them and uh, we'll see how we get on because the RX-8 seats are wider than the actual T4 bases, I've been down to a steel fabrication shop and uh, I just asked for some nice thick steel metal. Uh, they had uh, an off-cut that they literally sold me for £5 for 1.2 metres worth. It's 5 centimetres wide, it's 5 mil thick, so it's actually thicker than the actual base that it's going to be going onto as well. Uh, obviously, if you're going to be putting any runners on, you need to make sure that you're using some structural steel. You don't want to be using any light, mild steel, because if you're in a crash, uh, worst case scenario, the runner could just rip straight away from the base and take the seat with it. So as I say, the chunkiest metal you can get, really, uh, that's been cut down to just over 40 centimetres length. And as I say, that will sit just over the hole there. I'm going to drill some holes into it. Then, as you can see, it extends the side of the base across, and then I'll drill another hole in that side, and that's where the seat will sit. Right, so I've just been testing the wiring on the seat. Obviously, you want to make sure that the seat mechanism all works fine before you start going ahead and fitting it completely to the base. Uh, it'd be a nightmare if you fitted it all into the van, then realised that the seat doesn't work, or one of the motors might be blown, or you're not sure on the wiring or anything. So. Uh, I thought I'd best just get it all wired up just to a test battery, just a, a small little battery I've got there, uh, just to be sure that everything works. <coughs> now underneath, I, I haven't wired the electric, sorry, the heated seat, because obviously I don't, I just while I'm testing it, I don't want the heating just constantly going on. I'm going to be putting that one on the switch. The heated seat is just the solid blue cable. That one would be going to positive, but as I said, that one wants to go off to a switch first, just so you can turn it on and off. Otherwise, you'll be having a hot behind all the way through your journeys if it's just constantly on all the time. Uh, for the positive side, it's the solid grey cable and the yellow and red stripe. Those are for all of the seat motions, the lumbar support, and as I say, the blues for the heater. And on the negative side, it's the solid purple and the white with the yellow stripe. So I say it's just those two into a negative and the others into the positive. And once I put the heater on the switch, that will also just get fed into the positive as well. So once it's all connected to the battery, it's okay just to test the uh, the motors on the mechanism. So on the seat, you just it's a multi-function switch on the front, so you can just push it backwards and forwards, and that will start moving the runners. Then if you put it up or down, it will start uh, raising and lowering the actual height of the seat. Uh, that is the for the backrest to move that back and forward, and that one's your lumbar support as well. So all of these are working, uh, I'd say all the motors are working away fine, the lumbar supports are working fine as well, so I'm going to presume the heated seat's going to be working fine as well, because with everything else working there's no reason why that wouldn't, but I'd say that one's going to be on a switch regardless, so worst case scenario, if the heated, suite, uh, heated seat didn't work, I'll just leave it turned off, simple, but uh, I'd say that's going to be put onto a switch, so now I know everything works, so it's okay to start drilling the holes in the seat runners, getting those attached because now I, at least I can move the rails forwards and backwards just so I can now drill into the rails to get the holes widened out. There's a couple of areas where I've ground off where the old holes are. You might just be able to see the circular line there. I say that's ground totally flat so I'm just going to punch back through there with the drill bit, wind it out to 8mm. Same on the front just with that ground bit down there. That's where one of the old mounting holes was. So those are going to get drilled through, widened out and then they'll be okay to mount with the rails. Right, so there's one hole drilled through, so one down, four to go. Two down, two to go. 
Right, so that's the back rails drilled, and that would need to do the front ones, so I've just connected the motor back to the battery, just so I can move the rails all the way forward and away from the mechanism, because you don't want to be drilling through the rails and into any of the uh, any of the motors or any of the guides underneath, so you've got to be sure that there's a nice clear area that you're going to be drilling through. So now that's moved nicely forward, I can get that one drilled through now as well. So that's all four holes drilled on all four of the corners. So now I've got to drill the holes into the runners. As I say, they're already cut down to size, they're just over 40 centimetres long. Uh, I'm also going to have to drill a hole for the centre nut there to sit inside as well. You don't grind that off because that's actually holding part of the motor mechanism on the rails. So if you take that off when you are grinding the rest of the runners flat, uh, the actual mechanism might well fall out so that's the only one you do need to leave in place so a hole is going to have to be drilled for that as well just for the plate to sit over that and then that will be able to extend the runners out right so that's the seat mounted to the base now so it's now ready to go in and have the uh, the securing bolts secured back onto the floor itself and then have the wiring run in but it's still connected to the test battery. I uh, highly recommend having the electrics hooked up while you're trying to mount the seat to the base. It just means you can then move it back and forwards to get better access into the different corners uh, where you're going to be mounting it on. I say that's working fine. It's moving backwards, forwards, up, down. Uh, the lum even the lumbar support's working fine as well. Now for uh, added security, or well for safety as well, I've actually used the original mounting holes on the base for an entire side. So it's literally straight through the runner. I've still put a steel plate in there as well just so it's level on both sides and also because this seat has that m brass screw that I'll show you on the other side. Uh, there's a little cut out in that in the metal plate, but just to keep the height the same side uh, same size but for added security I've used the original mounting holes on those two sides so I've just drilled extra holes into the actual rail itself just so they fit and then on the other side it's got an extension bracket going across again I've put a chock out for the brass screw bit there that you can't cut off because that holds the mortars in but other than that again it's just mounting brackets there there I've used an additional one underneath there as well just for security but again it's also mounted through the uh, original base holes as well from the plate on the underside so as you can see I've got the that's the original seat runner that's a nice big thick chunky plate of metal and as you can see the thickness of that there is uh, ridiculous it's probably twice as thick as the actual base metal so there's no issues with any sort of uh, rigidity on that metal itself and then that's just had holes uh, drilled through on the underside and the nuts screwed into the original bolt holes for the base. So that is the driver's seat of an RX-8 mounted onto a T4 base, ready to go. I say the electrics are all ready to go as well, so now it's just time to get this base mounted back in the van, get the wiring done, and that's the seat done. So now that's the driver's seat in, I'm just re-modifying the passenger seat. I did already have this fitted, uh, but I used a slightly thinner metal than I would have preferred to use. So now I've got some of the really, really chunky stuff. I've uh, taken it back out, got rid of the stuff that I was using initially, and now it's going to be using 5mm thick plate, as you can see there. I say this stuff's stupidly thick. It's uh, literally more than twice the thickness of the actual seat base, as you can see there. So there should be no issues with any rigidity in this steel because as I say it's just stupid thick. The base plate itself is already pretty 2 mil thick. And as you can see there, there's a, there's a bit of a difference. So there shouldn't be any issues with this. So again, I've done similar to what I've done on the driver's side. I've actually utilised the existing mounts for where the base is. Now because the passenger side's on a swivel base, uh, I have drilled holes in one of the sides of the runner. 
so the swivel base can sit nice and neatly on it and the lever can still operate whenever you're fitting the swivel bases you always have to leave ideally at least an inch on the side just for the uh, lever to pull in to allow you to then rotate the actual base when you're connecting the base to the swivel it's always best to have it at an angle because then you can get into the four mountain corners with ease compared to doing it when it's all straight and obviously then you've got the runner trying to block where the nuts go and the bolts so as I say when you're connecting the swivel base to the actual seat base itself have it at an angle and then you can get into all four corners a lot easier and you're not having to try and struggle around where the runners are as well so I've got the swivel base mounted to the actual seat base itself uh, on the one side as I said this runner is completely lined up with the base itself so if I click it into there you can see that's totally in line the nuts are going through I've got just a little rising bar as well just so, just so it's the same height as the other side but that's going straight through and then straight up into the base as well so that is perfectly in the line as though it was a box standard T4 seat as I say that's 100% straight going straight through the runners and straight into the base now because of that the other side does need extending out and that's where I've cut the, uh, the plates for so I've already got these cut down I'm just going to need to drill some holes in these and then as I say one will be sitting at the back just about there and another one at the front on those and once those are on that is a passenger seat completely mounted and ready to go into a T4 Right, so there's one of the rear brackets done. I just need to now drill the holes for the front one as well. And then that'll be the seat mounted. As I say that's uh, really tight, really secure, and as I say, that's stupidly thick metal. So there should be no issues with uh, any structural rigidity on that. So as I say, that's one done. I've got the other plate cut there. I just need to start drilling the holes, get that one on that side, and then that is the seat mounted to the swivel base that's mounted to a base. Right, so that's all of the extension brackets fitted in place, uh, front and back on that side. And as I said earlier, that side's already just mounted in line with the actual swivel base itself, just for that extra security. So now it's OK to click the swivel base back in place and get it mounted back into the seat. And so it just goes back onto the four stra uh, standard square bolts, secure with the, the mushroom nuts, and uh, that's it. So I'm going to get this fastened back in. And that'll be both the seats fully swapped over. Yeah, so that's the passenger seat fully secured now uh, it's had all of the mushroom bolts underneath uh, secured down as well just in all four of the corners so that is the seat fully secure mounted to a swivel base swivels around with no problems as well to swivel it round you just need to tilt the backrest forward so you just lift the lever and on the other side of the base you've got the swivel release push that and then the seat just swivels straight round the seat just folds back into its uh, position again and uh, there you go. So I say that's the passenger seat fully facing the back of the van. And I say it's still free to move there as well. It swivels really easily. I mean, as I say that's just like a finger there. So I say it's nice and easy to swing around and then to put it back in the position again. You just tilt the back seat forward and then it spins around and clicks into place. And that's it. Again, the backrest is going to go back and just use the lever to put it back into the position that you want. So that's how I fitted the passenger seat to the swivel base that's then mounted onto the standard T4 base using extending bars on one side, original mounting holes on the other, and I've pretty much followed the same procedure on the driver's seat as well. As I say, the driver's seat is electric, so that's had the electrics wired up as well. But there we go, that's pretty much how I have fitted my 
our exit seats into the T4. I'll show the driver's seat after I've fully finished all the wiring and the tidying up on the underside. It was just a quick fit earlier on, so I'm still going to run some additional cabling just so I can secure it all to the base so there's nothing trailing underneath the seat just for feet to get caught on or anything. So I'm going to tidy all that away and then I'll do a quick final film once I've got the heated seat wired up on that as well. But that is progress being made. Right, so that is the seat install fully finished now. I've even got so far as to wire the heated seats in on both of the seats. Uh, I've got switches on there for those. Uh, for the wiring for the electric driver's seat, I've already got a 12 volt cable running down the side of the seat which I was going to use and I did wire up for testing purposes but when I tested it whilst running the fridge that's on at the back there and also moving the seat it was too much load for the inline fuse that I already had in line for the fridge so I decided because I wanted to connect both heated seats up at the same time I ran a brand new fully dedicated line coming from the battery straight down into a 30 amp switched relay which is connected to the glove box light it's exactly the same switched relay that I've also used for the power for the fridge so if you want to see how I've actually wired the relay in for the seats have a look at my channel I've got another video on there and it's exactly the same layout uh, for the fridge as it is for the wiring for the seats for the relay so after the power ran to the relay that's behind the glove box it's then ran down the side of the passenger seat and uh, then splits off for the passenger seat for the heated seat and also for the driver's seat for the electric so all of the cabling's going underneath the matting running from the passenger seat to the driver's seat i've still got to uh, tidy some of the cabling away underneath as you can see there it's still a little bit loose it just needs lifting up and taping out the way but i now have also wired in the heated seat as well which is the blue cable there so now both seats are wired just an illuminated switch on both seats so then they can be turned on and off independently especially during the winter when it's really cold you just want to sit on something nice and warm put the heated seat on and away you go so the cabling that I've ran is all 30 amp cabling for the seats just because the heated elements can take anywhere from 5 to 8 amp to warm up and the lumbar support seems to have quite a big draw on the driver's seat as well so it's all fully dedicated cabling and wiring going directly from the battery to a switched relay at the glove box into the passenger seat and then splits off into the driver's seat. Now because it's all on the relay, because the ignition isn't turned on, none of the seat functions work at all. But then as soon as you turn the ignition onto the dash, all the seats work fine. And again for the heated seats, because they're on illuminated switches, you can tell when they're turned on or off. And again on the driver's side. So that's everything working, everything fully operational, all of the seat motion on the seats working fine. All of the backrests, forwards, all the lumbar support, the heated seats. Uh, so there we go, that is my RX8 seats fully fitted into my VW T4 with all of the electrics wired up, heated seat function wired up at the same time, all to a switched relay meaning that it can't just drain the battery so when I take the keys out there is now no more function to the seat because the relay is now turned off. So there you go, that's how I've fitted my Mazda RX8 seats into my VW T4 using supporting brackets to be able to mount the seats onto the actual bases all the cabling's ran in and uh, everything's working lovely so there we go that's uh, my old seats out and some nice black leather Mazda RX-8 seats fitted fully operational and heating away so I hope you found the video useful if you did by all means have a look at my channel I'm pretty much convert, uh, documenting the entire conversion of this high top on there job by job so I'm trying to make it as easy as possible for anybody else who's doing a similar sort of conversion just to follow along so have a look at my channel, subscribe because there's always going to be a few more videos to come from this conversion as well. Uh, feel free to like and rate the video as well, I hope you found it useful. And if you did, as I say, do rate it, it just helps others find the video. And uh, yeah, have a look at my channel, I hope you found it useful and uh, hope you're liking the conversion as it's coming along so far. Cheers, bye.